The AI revolution will eliminate a lot of jobs, but it will also create new ones. My name is David Andre and here are 12 jobs AI will create. Number one, brain engineer. You know, a lot of people are scared of devices like Neuralink, but honestly, they are inevitable. Just think about it. Someone with a Neuralink will be able to do 100, 1000 time X as someone without it. It will start with people with disabilities, like people who can't hear, can't see, people who are paralyzed. Those will be the first people with those chips. But after that, you know, in maybe three years, maybe even faster, honestly, we'll have the actual Neuralink that's able to do anything Google or your computer can do, just based on your thoughts. I think Elon Musk actually said it to himself that he could price this at anything because even if it costs 10 million dollars or 100 million dollars, the advantage that he will get will instantly pay that off. With a Neuralink or any other brain computer interface, you could outcompete thousand normal people. So the price really doesn't matter. So yeah, I think Neuralink and devices like that are a much bigger play than people realize. Now obviously there are some serious ethical implications with this. Like will the device be able to control you or will it be one way and how do you know if it's safe? to wear you know i believe it's inevitable but i don't know how it will play out new job number two exoplanetologist now if you don't know what this job means it's basically someone who is examining and looking at newly discovered planets there are a lot of planets already discovered with ai and there will be more and more especially once we start sending ai to explore the universe so a new job that will become way more popular than it is now right now nobody is an exoplanetologist like 10 people in the world you you don't know anybody with this job but honestly that might change in the next 10 20 years hundreds of potentially inhabitable planets will be discovered every year now the most exciting part about being an exoplanetologist is that you might be the person discovering aliens since inhabitable planets are the most likely to include some sort of life and as space travel becomes more affordable and more popular popular exoplanetologists will play even a bigger role like let's say you want to go to mars it's like that's sure there'll be companies like spacex doing that it's interesting <laughs> another elon company that wasn't intentional but anyway you, you want to know you're gonna survive when you go to a, a different planet or just you know into the space so having someone who is an expert such as an exoplanetologist will be really crucial basically like someone doing a travel guide but instead of traveling to a different country you're traveling to a different planet new job number three quantum mechanics there is a very high chance that quantum computing will happen this decade and once it does it will change everything you know a lot of people think that cryptography that we have today will be completely broken which also means that cryptocurrencies will be completely gone but it will also allow us to achieve new discoveries and things that we couldn't do before like drug discovery you know solving the cures of illnesses cancer hiv stuff that we cannot cure today but with quantum computing we might be able to also it will play a major role with artificial intelligence which is you know a topic that that I'm interested in. So a quantum computer will require a quantum mechanic. Now right now there are a lot of people working on normal computers but not many people work on quantum computers which will change a lot. So if you're interested in computers, AI, quantum computers, consider being a quantum mechanic. Next up, biotech entrepreneur. You know healthcare will become more and more important as more people live to be 80, 90, 100 and not just old people. Everybody needs healthcare. So being a biotech entrepreneur will become a serious job. One change that I think will be absolutely huge. Personalized treatments. For example, you have some people that say milk is horrible and that it will kill you and you know, you will die if you drink it. And then there are people who say dairy is great, milk is healthy. The truth is that it depends on every person. But right now, nobody really has personalized diets. Why not just take a blood test and see what's best for you? Or like based on your genetics. Some people can process wheat well, some people can't. So once we have AI and quantum computers and all these technologies, being a biotech entrepreneur will be really in demand because personalized diets will be the thing. You won't just eat what everybody else is eating because that's not the best food for you. What's best for me is not the same for you. You might need more protein, I might need more fiber. It's like everybody needs something else. Another new job will be AI philosopher. Now typically, you know, in today's society, if someone is a philosopher, like people don't take him seriously. But right now, I think that will change with AI philosophers. Once AI can do everything better than humans, what will humans do? Like someone needs to think this through and someone needs to get the answers because, you know, the average Joe working a 9 to 5 will not come up with a solution how humans prevent like AI destruction. Someone needs to think about that and that's a lot of thinking and most people aren't willing to think. 
For that reason, AI philosophers might actually be the most important people alive. Because who else will find some potential AI danger that everybody else is missing, you know? Thinking is much more valuable than, you know, fixing pipes, digging ditches. Like that, that can be done by robots easily. What happens now where AI goes? Some people need to figure that out and it will have a much bigger impact on humanity, people realize. Now the following job already exists, but the reason why I included it is because it will become insanely popular in the upcoming years. And that is neural engineer. Someone who tests neural networks, you know, sees if there is any bad data in the data set, if there are any errors or risks, you know, you don't want people asking illegal stuff like how to make explosive devices. So a neural engineer just trains AI basically. All of the AI we have today, like large language models, image generators, self-driving cars, all of those run on neural networks. And there had to be people training those networks, creating those networks and optimizing them so that when a car sees a cyclist, it doesn't think it's a tree, you know? Like that's a very important thing. A lot of that will be just optimizing and testing, but some of that, especially the high-end people like, you know, Ilya Satskiver and Andrei Karpafi, those type of people, those are neural engineers. They create new neural networks and think of new ways to solve problems. Even people like Jeffrey Hinton, who is the godfather of artificial intelligence, his idea was it that the brain is actually the way to go because neural networks, they, they weren't obvious. For a long time, people thought that that's not the way to go. They thought that the original computing, you know, throw more power at it, throw processors and stuff that this was the path for AI. But actually, people like Jeffrey Hinton thought that it's much better to mimic the brain since that's the only thing that works, you know? That's the best model of intelligence we have. So that's how neural networks actually became a thing. Another new job will be what's called an AI human interaction designer. Now that's, you know, a complex name, but basically making sure that humans and robots treat each other well, which is also like, you don't want people smashing some robot. You already see that today with those little driving robots that replace people who deliver like Uber Eats. People are mad at those robots. Like I've seen some videos of them being smashed to pieces. So that's already happening. And this is not just about the hardware side. It's also about the software, you know. ChatGPT almost wasn't a thing because everybody at OpenAI thought that it's not worth it creating an interface for the masses. They already had GPT-3, the language model created two years ago. So it was actually Sam Altman's idea to push and create a product that the average person can use. So in a way, Sam Altman already is a human AI interaction designer. We were very close to not having ChatGPT, but luckily Sam Altman persisted. Now this is a fun one, robot trainer. I think it's called Atlas, the newest robot that can do flips and parkour and stuff. And people need to train him, you know? Those people that are pushing the robot with a stick, you know, they might seem bad on camera and like annoying to the robot, but those are the people who train it. Now right now, robot trainer isn't really a serious job, but as robots become more and more popular and prevalent, robot trainer will be a very popular job. You can quote me on that. Now, if you're someone who likes teaching and explaining concepts, then the next job might be for you. It doesn't have any official title yet, but basically it's like AI slash robotics educator. Kind of what I'm doing right now, to be honest. As AI becomes more and more popular and the progress becomes faster and faster, someone needs to teach the people who aren't in touch with the latest tech trends, which is most people, obviously. So what will happen once AI does everything? There will be a serious need for AI educators and robotics educators who learn all the complex concepts and are able to extract them and communicate them clearly to everybody else. It will also be inside of companies as, you know, robot trainers and all of the other jobs later in the list. Those will be people who need to be trained. So you need some sort of an AI teacher that actually trains people on robotics, quantum computing, AI, neural nets, all of these concepts. The demand is there, but the supply isn't. So you will need people and programs and, you know, courses and stuff, mainly people inside of companies who are training new hires on onboarding them, explaining how the processes work, what AI is, what AGI is, you know, what machine learning is. All of that needs to be clearly explained for someone to enter the AI field. Next up, we have an AI ethics officer. Now this sounds, you know, kind of questionable on the surface, but basically an AI ethics officer will make sure that everybody is following the rules. Nobody is trying to develop an AI that destroys the world. Like recently, there was someone who created Chaos GPT, which was basically a version of ChatGPT that was autonomous, you know, it was 
was running on auto GPT and the guy gave it like five goals of like control our humans figure out how to achieve global domination stuff like that now obviously it didn't do any actual harm but you know in a few years it will be possible that someone some company will try to create a super intelligent AI that benefits them so having an AI ethics officer stop that will be very very important another existing industry that will become very very popular is cybersecurity because AI is on the web it's software and you really want to make sure if you develop some software that someone doesn't just hack into your PC and steal it so having proper cybersecurity in place will be much more important than ever before and honestly this job is kind of fun because you're basically a hacker that's paid by a company to follow all the latest hacking trends and be up to date with the latest threats and hacks and viruses so it's actually like a legal way to be a hacker just you know doesn't sound bad we've already talked about robot trainers but one job that will be even more popular is a robot mechanic someone who's able to examine your robot fix the mistakes basically car mechanics but for robots you know a lot of people have the Roombas you know I have one the robot that cleans the floor and vacuums stuff those are quite easy to fix but there will be much more complicated robots like the white one from Google I don't know the name but basically it had like a robot arm it was able to drive pick up items there will be really advanced robots soon these robots will require competent and experienced robot mechanics or robot engineers the same way you don't try to fix your car you know most people don't just open up the engine and start removing things and testing <laughs> like that's a ba very bad idea for most people and if you think about it it's very likely that a lot of the people who currently are car mechanics will actually be the people who become robot mechanics since they already have experience with you know tools and repairing stuff and also robot mechanics will be much better paid than car mechanics let's be honest if you're a robot mechanic at a company like Google you aren't making the same amount of money as a car mechanic at your local dealership that's for sure so those were 12 jobs that will be created but a lot of jobs will be removed so if you want to know whether your job is a danger watch this video right here